The next topic is post postmodernist bourgeoisie. The postmodernist bourgeoisie liberalism. Postmodernist bourgeois liberalism on ethnocentrism. A reply to Clifford Gertz. Clifford Gertz was an anthropologist, American anthropologist, that was a, a very he, he liked to offer, uh, uh, to drive the interpretation of cultures in a way very very particular. Yeah? And I think that uh, if I remember this topic is when uh, Horty. Uh, uh, addresses to the way that Clifford Gates talks about ethnocentrism in a way that uh, the, the ethnocentrism does not deny the way that the, the society, the prior society, the prime society of the thinker works. Sometimes if the anthropologist tends to deny in a way his own culture to our, to, to impose the interpretation of the other culture. I think something like that, if I remember correctly. If I don't and you know, someone know, please comments, put in the comments so you can learn from my mistakes. Uh, cosmopolitanism without emancipation, a response to Jean-François Lyotard, Index of Names. Lyotard was a French thinker that I don't know very much. I just know that he's from the same generation of uh, Michel Foucault, um, and Jacques Lacan, and uh, some others I don't remember now. Uh, it's called the, the, the 68 generation, a eh, generation of thinkers that was like a very much into the disconstruction, disconstruction of the modern, of the modern, modern way of thinking, uh, of the, the traditional way of thinking from the modern times, something like that. I don't remember very much about. I just know the saying to you the context. So this is a this this those are the context contents. Uh, since the publication of his work. Horty uh, in 79, uh, Philosophy in the Mirror of Nature. Richard Horty has become increasingly known and influential, far beyond the walls of American analy analytical philosophy, of which he was a great exponent until then. In fact, from the moment on, he radically distanced himself from the analytical mainstream, becoming one of its most destructive critics, uh, and even abandoned his covert position as professor of philosophy at Princeton. I didn't know that. I'm reading. I didn't know that. Abandoned his position, changing it shortly after later, at the invitation of E. D. Hirsch Jr. by a professor of humanities uh, at the University of Virginia. In this, where he remained for 16 years, Horty began to publish texts that were increasingly closer to the tradition of continental philosophy. Taking uh, continental means Europe, Europe, and from Germany mostly in France. But this is what is continental philosophy means. He he was a friend of. Uh, uh, Jürgen Habermas, uh, there's a book about a debate of the two of them, Horty and Habermas, that I have a video here in the channel, super academic, but in Portuguese, if you're interested, you may take a look. Taking as a team, especially Nietzsche, Heidegger, Derrida, I forgot, Derrida was of the generation, Foucault and Habermas, but also the work of novelists such as Proust, Nabokov and Orwell, thus fulfilling the functions of which he was hired, but especially in the 1990s, 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 <laughs> he began to write about what he called cultural politics. 
try to articulate and make explicit his views on politics, as well as relating them to different areas of culture. During the 1990s, Horty, 1990s, of course, Horty became much more explicit and direct, direct about his political views. He engaged in what he called cultural politics. Horty's philosophy of education is made explicit in this phase of his work in which has, as with other areas of culture, the question of the relationship between philosophy and education is very important, is seen through the prism of its usefulness for cultural policy. The more philosophy interacts with other human activities, activities not just natural science but also education, art, literature, religion and politics, the more relevant the, uh, to culture policy it becomes, and therefore, the more useful. I think this video is too long, 20 to 21 minutes. Even so, Richard Horty, philosophy of education, is a problematic expression for at least three reasons. One, it is unsystematic because there is no work or a significant set of texts in which he has made his philosophical ideas ex explicit about education. Two, uh, he is inaccurate because this topic always ends up, ends up mixing with his political views. He was basically a left-wing liberal, as I say, so it must interfere with his thinking. It, it must must have interfered, of course. He's already passed away. It seems little relevant to him due to the lack of enthusiasm he manifested for the connection between philosophy. On the other hand, and the only one hand, and on one hand, in education and politics on the other, or rather, for what philosophy as a discipline or area of knowledge could could to do in relation to both. This is a quotation about him, that of, from him, a quotation from him. Um, I am someone who has doubts about the relevance of philosophy to education, <laughs> for the same reason that I have doubts about the relevance of philosophy to politics. Of course, he was, I think, being ironic. It's very important, it's very important philosophy to education and to, pol and to politics. <coughs> to get around these three difficulties, it will be necessary to adopt the following strategies. strategies sorry. First, despite the dispersion and lack of systematic systematicity in his thematization of the issue of education, it is possible to obtain a reasonable outline of his ideas about its true a careful reading through a careful reading of the of of his small instructive test text education as socialization and individualization seems to inter be interesting this title is very interesting i haven't read that using experts scattered elsewhere to complete it Second, it could to complete it. Second, it will be necessary to necessary not to take his unusual mix between education politics and culture and cultural policy as a theoretical demerit, as a lack of precision and rigor, but as an intentional strategy adopted by him to remove philosophy from its academic enclosure. The so that his philosophical treatment of education would have an impact on cultural policy, that is, be useful. Third, it will be considered that Horty's doubts about the relevance of philosophy to politics and education stem only from his discredited, discredited, his discredited, discredits, sorry, discredits for the way in which the philosophical tradition 
on the right and the left of the polit political spectrum dealt with such questions until recently. That is relating truth and freedom with a supposed human essence, which would be realized as soon as education is the quality, is the quality, sorry, adequately. <laughs> adequately. It seems like in Portuguese, adequately fulfilled its role, its role. In both accounts of the subject, the original rightists and the inverted leftists, there is a natural connection between truth and freedom. Um, in both accounts of, subject, of the subject, the original rightists and the inverted leftists, there is a natural connection between truth and freedom. Both accept the identification of truth and freedom with the essentially human. Yeah, freedom with essentially human. And uh, he, he's saying that's the problem of leftists and rightists that they see this essence as something that's prior to human existence. I understood that way. As myself, as existentialist, I believe that existence comes before. I could not, I, I can accept that as a statement. Um, finally, he says, it is this metaphysical treatment of the question that intends to abandon with his own and allegedly useful thematization for the things that there is no such thing as human nature, nor is there such a thing as the alienation of one's essential essential humanity due to social repression in the profound sense made familiar by Rousseau and the Marxists. The achievements of the objective of this article, which is to examine the two critical lines that accuse Hort respectively of being conservative and elitists to show that they are wrong when applied to his ideas of educational, education, education, educating citizens in a liberal democracy. As I said before, liberal democracy is something very important to Hortis and most pragmatists. In the case of the first criticism, that of conservatism, conservatism, it will be shown how an education focused on the production of a reform, reformist rhetoric, as true by Horty, can do more for democratic, democratic values, including not only freedom but also equality. So this is a new review. I think the videos got too long. Maybe I'll divide it in two parts just <laughs> to. To, to preserve you and not tire you, uh, but uh, I, I think it was important to develop the, the main ideas that Horty develops uh, in his books, uh, he, in this book specifically, mostly, but in his work in a, a whole, Objectivism, Relativism and Truth, uh, philosophical papers. There's a volume one. I never got the volume two or else i don't know if there is such a thing uh, probably there is i think there is but i recommend that if you got interested with the ideas of richard horty you get to research and search for more information about him in your language portuguese or english whatever and i hope you enjoy and please subscribe to both channels, help the channels, channels to grow, and comments, yeah, give us comments about what we discuss here today in this video, share the video, and we see each other, give the like, give the like, yeah, subscribe, like, and we see, I see you, you see me, we see each other in the next video, bye bye.